Sava and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about calories. But before we get into the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss another one of my videos. Alright, let's get into it. So what is a calorie? When people talk about the calories in food, what do they mean? A calorie is a unit of measurement. It's a unit of energy, really. When you hear that something contains 100 calories, it's a way of describing how much energy your body can get from eating or drinking it. A calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie. I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times. I don't know where this idea of calories are the most important aspect of your diet, but the source doesn't matter came from, but it's dead wrong. It just doesn't logically even make any sense. 100 calories that are found in string beans cannot possibly be the same 100 calories that are found in a cookie. They don't have the same nutritional or caloric value. All calories do, however, have the same amount of energy. One dietary calorie contains 4,184 joules of energy. But I can tell you from studying nutritional sciences that your body is nothing but a complex machine. Your body is a biochemical system that has what seems like infinite elaborate processes that regulate energy balance every single day. Every food that you eat goes through a different biochemical pathway. Some pathways are more efficient than others, some cause um, energy loss through heat, the list goes on. So we're going to go over four different concepts here today. Number one, fructose versus glucose. Fructose and glucose are the main simple sugars that are found in your diet. They have the same number of calories, but the way that they're metabolized in your body is completely different. While glucose can be metabolized by all of your body's tissues, fructose can only be metabolized by your liver. For example, fructose leads to higher ghrelin levels. Ghrelin, if you don't know what that is, is the hunger hormone. It goes up when you're hungry and down after you eat. Fructose also doesn't stimulate your satiety centers in your brain like glucose does. Consuming a lot of fructose can cause insulin resistance, increased triglycerides, blood sugar, and small dense LDL compared to the same exact number of calories from glucose. Keep in mind though, fructose only has these negative effects when consumed in excess. Added sugar and candy are the typical sources of fructose. But don't think I'm encouraging you not to eat fruits. Yes, they contain fructose, but they are rich in fiber and water, and they mitigate the negative effects. So just to sum everything up, even though fructose and glucose contain the same number of calories, fructose has far more negative effects on your hormones, appetite, and metabolic health. Number two, the thermic effect of food. Different foods go through different metabolic pathways like I mentioned before. Some of these pathways are more efficient than others. If a pathway is more efficient, then more of that food's energy will be used for work and less will be lost through heat. The thermic effect of food is a measurement of how much different foods increase your energy expenditure because of the amount of energy that is required to be able to digest, absorb, and metabolize nutrients. For the thermic effect of macronutrients, for fat, it's 2-3%, to for carbs, it's 6-8%, to and for protein, it's 25-30%. to As you can see, the metabolic pathways for protein is much less than for carbs and for fat. Protein contains 4 calories per gram, but most of that is lost as heat. So what does this mean? Simply put, protein requires more energy to metabolize than fat and carbs do. Therefore, high protein diets are shown to boost your metabolism by 80 to 100 calories per day. So to sum this all up, calories from protein are less fattening than calories from carbs and from fat. This is simply due to the fact that protein takes more energy to metabolize. Whole foods also need more energy to digest than processed foods do. This is why you always hear me talking about whole foods. Number three, the glycemic index. Refined carbs are bad. This includes added sugars, so sucrose and high fructose corn syrup, and refined grains, so like white bread. Refined carbs are typically low in fiber and are absorbed and digested quickly. So what does this do? This causes rapid spikes in your blood sugar, which therefore means they have a high glycemic index. 
all this is is a measure of how quickly foods raise your blood sugar levels. These foods tend to lead to a crash in your blood sugar, which then come the cravings of another high carb snack. If you're on a high carb diet, please, 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 please choose whole unprocessed carb sources that contain fiber. Fiber reduces the rate of which glucose enters your system. People who eat more high GI foods are at the highest risk for becoming obese and diabetic. So to sum everything up, refined carbs lead to faster and higher spikes in your blood glucose levels, which then lead to cravings and an increase in caloric intake. Number four, the satiety index. Different foods have different effects on satiety. All this means is that some foods are going to make you feel more full than others do. Similarly, it's much easier to overeat some foods than it is others. For example, for Sean to eat 500 calories of ice cream, no problem. For him to eat 500 calories of his million eggs in the morning, it's like spoon feeding a child. <laughs> Just like I talked about before, the food choices that you make do make a huge impact on the total calories that you end up consuming. The satiety index is the measure of the ability of foods to reduce feelings of hunger, increase feelings of fullness, and reduce calorie intake for the next few hours. If you eat foods that are low in the satiety index, then you're going to feel hungrier and you are going to be eating more. On the other hand, if you eat foods that are high in the satiety index, you will eat less and potentially lose weight. Foods that are high in the satiety index include boiled potatoes, beef, eggs, beans, and fruit. Foods that are low in the satiety index are things like donuts and cakes. So to sum everything up, different foods have different effects on satiety and how many calories you end up eating thereafter. This is all measured on a scale called the satiety index. Okay, so bottom line, just like I've said before with nutrition, a calorie is not a one-size-fits-all. Different sources have different effects on hunger, hormones, energy expenditure, and more. Calories are important, but counting them is not necessary in order to lose weight. It's all about the simple changes. Restricting your calories isn't always the answer. You can get the same or better results by just selecting different foods rather than just reducing your caloric intake altogether. Okay, well that's all I have for this video you guys. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something new. Make sure to give me your feedback in the comment section below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss another one of my videos. If you want to get my exclusive nutrition tips, healthy food recommendations, and delicious recipes, make sure to head down to the description box, click the link, and join the fam. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!